Hey everyone, Pat from Aeroflow Performance, and in this video, I'm going to show you our 6262 and 6255, two turbochargers that are capable of 900 engine horsepower. Okay, so here we are, talking about boosted turbochargers again. It's a pretty common theme with Aeroflow these days, but we just keep expanding this range to get bigger and bigger and provide more and more solutions. So we've had these two turbochargers, these two sizes, for a little while now, but we thought we'd cover it in a video to show the differences and perhaps maybe where you would use one over the other. Now, we've got uh, the 6262, which is rated at 900 horsepower, and we have the 6255, which is also rated at 900 horsepower. Why would you have the difference between the two? Well, as the names suggest, uh, the 6262 has a 62 millimetre turbine wheel and the 6255 has a 55 millimetre turbine wheel. Now, the reason why you would have a different size on the turbine versus uh, the compressor is mostly to do with engine capacity. So the smaller turbine is gonna require less force, less drive or drive pressure from the exhaust out of the motor to get it spinning. Uh, it's going to provide a more responsive option uh, on a lower capacity engine. Capacity is always difficult. You need to size the turbochargers appropriately for that motor. So on this one, we'd probably recommend something like 1.8 to 2.5 litre capacity. Uh, and then on the 6262, we're talking two litre to perhaps three and a half. Um, in the capacity there, which is going to be appropriate for response and peak power um, that you can make. So to walk you through the turbos from uh, the actual physical properties of them, let's go from the front to the back. So at the front, both of these turbochargers have 62 millimetre compressor inducers. So that's the front of the compressor wheel here. This measurement that you'll, that you'll get across the front of the blades that you can see, that's called the compressor inducer. That is 62 millimetres across there. It's made from a 7075 billet alloy, which is an aircraft grade aluminium. They CNC machine that in a five axis machine, uh, and then they point mill the compressor blades. So you can see on the front of these blades, these little dimples and these little grooves, and that's called point milling. That's an aerodynamic advantage when it comes to spinning that compressor wheel and those blades at a very high RPM. So they operate at a higher RPM more efficiently. As we move on, you might also see that there is nine blades on this compressor wheel, which is a new development in this generation of turbocharger. The nine on the front, and then we'll skip to it, but the nine on the turbine means that these turbochargers are really well balanced. So that means that the inertia required to spin both is actually much lower. So it means for a more responsive turbocharger. So we've got the nine blade point milled billet 7075 compressor wheel. The housing features not only a speed sensor port uh, that's in the side here, but also the 18th NPT auxiliary port, which you can use for uh, a boost reference or, or some other sensor that you may require a uh, boost reference for. Then we're moving on to the core. So on these turbochargers, this family of turbochargers, we've got the one piece core section or CHRA. In the side, you can see coolant ports. These coolant ports are mirrored on the other side. Now it's important to note that water cooled ball bearing turbochargers must be water cooled for warranty purpose, but also for the longevity. The oil that's going in the top is a restricted amount of oil. So it's only a very small amount of oil that has to lubricate the internal components of that turbocharger. To keep it cool because of the exhaust pressure and the temperature that's going on inside of this, we run water or coolant through it. Now it's important to note that you can use either of these ports, the upper or the lower, but it has to go in one side and out the other. The core doesn't flow in and out. Uh, at the top or bottom. So it has to choose which one is more appropriate for your application, go in on one side and then out on the other. As I mentioned, the oil requirement for the ball bearing core is quite low, but also we want to keep the pressure down. So ball bearing cores, you're looking generally at around 40 PSI being the happy point uh, for them. 
As a result, this fitting that's fitted in the top here is a Dash 4 fitting, but it has a restrictor inside of it as well. So when you're bolting these onto your vehicle, make sure that you retain that restrictor fitting, or if you're gonna to change to a different size or some other sort of fitting, you need to make sure that the oil pressure is regulated to the core. So there's some other oil pressure regulators that are available in the market, or you can use our little uh, pills. So it's uh, AF39904, uh, which is a little one mil restrictor pill that'll go inside there. Moving on from the core, uh, I did mention that it is a one piece unit, which brings down the size of the, uh, of the overall unit. So it's much shorter. That means that the uh, shaft for the turbine and the compressor is shorter again. And that in turn reduces the amount of inertia required to get the wheels spinning and also makes it more stable at a much higher RPM. If we move on from there, we're going into the rear section of the turbo, which is the turbine and the turbine housing. Again, we mentioned briefly, nine blades on the turbine wheel, which is a step up from previous generations, which are generally 10 blade to 11 blade. The nine blade aero allows more exhaust gas to flow through this turbine wheel, because that is a point of restriction. When you're letting your engine breathe, the exhaust gas comes out, has to go through the manifold, and then it has to go into this housing, and then it has to come past the turbine wheel. That's what spins the turbo. The more restriction that's in that turbine is basically means that the engine will struggle at higher RPM because it needs to breathe. So by taking the blade out of there and changing the design of the blades, that allows more flow. So the nine blade turbine is allowing us to get to that higher horsepower figure uh, and also run a larger, a larger capacity engine on a smaller turbine wheel. So nine blade turbine, then we've got the rear housing. This example is a dual V-band, but we have these in dual V-band T3 and T4, rear housings in various sizes. So from a technical aspect or a physical aspect, that's basically the features between the two turbos. They are, they are similar. As I mentioned, the, the features, the turbine on the 6262 is larger. It's a 62 millimeter turbine, whereas the 6255 is a 55 millimeter turbine. They're both nine blade. They're both nine blade compressor with 62 mil. They both have the same construction. And you would say, uh, if you're trying to figure out where this would sit in the range of turbochargers that are available in the world, you would say that these are similar to a G35 and a G30 style turbocharger. So that gives you a bit of an idea as to where they're, uh, where they're rated to. So 900 horsepower capable, small compact unit, uh, very responsive uh, and very flexible. So we've got the V-band units available in regular rotation and reverse rotation. So as you can see here, the two turbos are spinning opposite ways. That's not just the external housing as well, the turbocharger itself actually spins the opposite direction as well. So um, that allows you to not only package a turbo, a single turbo in a particular engine bay uh, more conveniently, more compactly, but also gives you an aesthetic, uh, an aesthetic benefit if you're building a twin turbo setup so you can have the compressor wheels featuring, you know, pointing the same way. You have the turbine houses, housings pointing the same way. Uh, makes for a much nicer engine bay, uh, but also allows you to configure your pipe work uh, a lot neater and uh, a lot more conveniently. All right, everyone, now you know all about the boosted 6262 and the boosted 6255. If you've got any more questions regarding application or sizing for your turbocharger, make sure you drop us a line at boosted at aeroflowperformance.com or you can get hold of us on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, and even TikTok. Uh, we're also on YouTube, where you'll probably see this video, uh, and that's all at Aeroflow Performance. So you can see these at your local distributor, a quality retail outlet, or jump online at aeroflowperformance.com. <laughs>